circulating tumor cells shed from a primary or metastatic Krasner into bloodstream uh, stream, uh, and mixed with uh, normal blood components became uh, rare cells. An efficient isolation of these rare cells, keeping them viable and in an intact state and with a high degree of purity with respect to their surrounding uh, blood cells becomes still today a technological challenge. Microfluidic lab on chip devices provide uh, unique opportunities for this rare cell detection and sorting or separation, some of which, or many of which, work with uh, lab free technologies that uh, don't require the introduction of any external nano or micro elements for the detection or manipulation, delivering the target cells viable for their later biomolecular analysis. Uh, part of this text uh, induce hydrodynamic mechanisms in flowing, so on flowing samples to allow the cell separation based on their different physical properties, which is the case of the most of epithelial CTCs from, blood, uh, from normal blood cells. They have different size, different density, they are more deformable, more compressible, so and other properties concerning to their migratory properties. There is a key factor uh, related to this mechanism, which is the Reynolds number, and it concerns to the flow velocity around each single cell. It, as you know, it relates the inertial and viscous forces acting on each single cell, and uh, for the case of the obscene regimes, which concerns to Reynolds numbers as smaller but not much smaller than unity, the, viscous, the inertial forces become significant. So if we assume that the cells uh, follow the streamlines, streamlines uh, it leads to incorrect results. In fact, at these uh, Reynolds numbers, there are local disturbances of the flow field around the cells giving rise to preserved gradients and asymmetries of the flow field around them. So it, lead, it, it allows the, the cells to behave uh, different depending on their, physical, on their specific physical properties. Ultrasounds can be strate strategically applied to alter or vary the dynamics of different types of cells with different uh, physical properties from other uh, human fluid samples like epithelial cells from blood cells. At certain acoustic conditions, a nonlinear interaction between the incident wave and uh, the wave scattered by, by each single cell gives rise to a disturbance or, uh, uh, around the cell with uh, asymmetric pressure gradients. So a radiation force is generated driving each cell toward a zone of acoustic equilibrium. For an incident plane standing wave, uh, this uh, you see in the slide the expression for the radiation force uh, for particles or cells which are much smaller than the acoustic wavelength of the of the acoustic wavelength. Uh, uh, it's related to the volume of the cell, so the cubic power of the size of the cell, and to the densities and compressibilities of both the cells and the medium, the host medium in which they are immersed, through the acoustic contrast factor. This, this coefficient determines the sense of the direction of the location where the particles or cells collect. For positive values of the contrast factor, the particles or cells collect at the pressure nodes, which in blood is the case of the red blood cells and white blood cells. On the contrary, those negative uh, acoustic contrast factors lead the, the cells toward the maximal pressure uh, locations, which is the case of platelets. Epithelial tumor cells are more susceptible to the uh, uh, radiation force acoustically induced than leukocytes. It is because of the three parameters that distinguish them uh, from the physiological, uh, acoustic physical points of view, which are their size. The CTCs are, have increased uh, uh, size. They are larger than 15 microns. And their density is uh, smaller than those, that one of the leukocytes uh, because uh, it's uh, measured by oncoquick and fecal uh, liquids. And the compressibility of uh, all the epithelial tumor cells uh, find that we have found in the literature are always 
larger than uh, the, that one of the leukocytes. We have made an estimate uh, using a MATLAB uh, software uh, to know how uh, they are, both they are uh, susceptible to the radiation force, varying their sizes and densities, and in all the cases we have found that the radiation force is always higher on the epithelial cells. Uh, and uh, it's clearly due to the to the the relationship between this force and the volume of the size. A difference of one micron or two microns uh, gives up um, uh, eight times uh, the radiation force on different cells. The acoustic cell separation can be produced in resonant cavities or non-resonant cavities in devices that behave as full resonators. The establishment of plain standing waves in cavities produce cell collection in parallel bands uh, uh, separated a distance of a half wavelength, which is the, ca the case of this example that I show you, uh, made in our lab with yeast, uh, a yeast suspension uh, subjected to uh, an acoustic field at 500 kilohertz. Once collected, uh, the cells can be separated by different outlets. Uh, resonant channel-based devices require rigid materials, rigid constitutive materials like uh, silicon or glass, uh, for the establishment of a standing way between the side walls of the channel. Uh, they require, bueno, the pressure nodes are established at fixed positions where the cells collect, which is defined by the width of the channel, so it's not uh, variable. Um, well, they are expensive devices. I am discarding uh, a standing uh, surface acoustic wave devices. They are a special case. But other polymeric um, devices are also possible to perform the cell extraction in which a channel of, or, or the cavity of treatment has not to be resonant, but is the whole device who be, which behaves as a whole resonant system. So they don't require rigid materials as the standing wave is not established just within the, the channel. So this is an advantage. We can use soft, acoustically soft materials like polymers. Uh, these polymeric devices uh, exhibit multiple resonances around the frequency of work of the piezoelectric uh, actuator, uh, the, uh, generating different uh, spatial pat uh, pressure patterns inside the channel of treatment. Uh, complex three-dimensional modes of vibration are established within the solid plastic structure, varying slightly the frequency around the central work frequency of work. So we can, as you can see in this uh, simulation in console, so we can select. So I think. We can select some frequencies of interest uh, which provide pressure nodes collecting the cells at a strategic locations for the later extraction. It depends on the application and on the device we select uh, for the application. And in, uh, this is an example in which we have selected a, a node with a shape uh, uh, approximately parallel to the sidewalls, but not center, but well, it depends on the application. Uh, so, slight variations of the frequency provide different pressure node locations, as I've, I've told you before, with the electrical uh, graph of the resonances. In a variation of 20 kilohertz uh, to the left and to the, to the side, uh, about around 1 megahertz, we observe uh, different locations where the particles collect. And from them, we can choose that one that is of our interest. Our chips uh, include a polymeric chip that contains a tunnel of treatment and a piezoelectric actuator attached to one of its la outer lateral edges. Uh, the sample containing the target cells and a collector fluid are injected through the two inlets to flow in parallel uh, along the channel under a standing wave applied mainly established a, a para perpendicular to the flow motion. At a certain frequency, the, pre the pressure node is established within the path of the collector fluid, so those target cells more susceptible to the radiation force cross the interface from the blood sample to collect there. And once collected, the cells continue their flow motion till they leave the, the channel, separated from their host medium. 
this is our experimental setup, it's, very, it's simple. Uh, the, the samples are injected by a, by a, by a syringe pump and a, a microscope uh, attached to a CCD is focused directly onto the channel of treatment so we can observe and process the images from the particles under the acoustic field flowing through the channel, along the channel. Parabolic stability is rich in the flow field within the channel at a distance le less than two millimeters uh, from the inlet junction. Our chips incorporate a cytometer to inject the cells pre-aligned and to flow confined close to one of the walls. To, to have all of them at the same initial conditions. Here you can observe a reconstruction or a film trajectories of a tumor cell and a white blood cells starting from the same distance to the preser, the preser node and uh, their curvature or uh, their approaching curvature uh, agrees with our numerical simulation assuming the cells as similar compressible particles with the same density, compressibility factors, and, and the science uh, equivalent. Here at the end of the, of the channel, you observe how the tumor cells, uh, once collected at the preserve node, leave the, the device from, uh, through the left outlet, through the left outlet, while most of the leukocytes leave it through the right uh, outlet. This is the same. In the lower uh, outlet, you, observe, you can observe some tumor cells leaving the, 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 the device, while most of the leukocytes leave it through the uh, upper outlet. Well, here is a resume of the, the, the movie you have served before. We have achieved efficiencies of the, for the tumor cell extractions up to 70% at, at low flow rates, uh, varying between 20 and 50 microliters per minute. When we increase the flow rate up to 100 uh, microliters per minute for a chip with a channel length, an active channel length of 6 millimeters, uh, these flow rates are too high uh, to achieve a, and enough efficiency of separation. Um, so the, our, our next step is to increase their efficiency, it's this efficiency, so um, uh, we have to vary some uh, parameters. We have varied also the voltage applied and of course we observe that as we increase the, the voltage, uh, more tumor cells have time enough to reach the producer node inside the channel of treatment, leaving it separated from their host sample. But we have to be very careful with the ultrasounds to avoid high uh, voltages uh, that could damage cells or even produce cavitation. We are far from it, but we have to be careful of it. Uh, our next uh, goal is uh, the optimization of our devices, and we are doing it now. Currently, we are um, introducing changes, uh, structural changes uh, concerning to the substrate of the chips and also uh, geometrical variations concerning to the, to the length and other parameters uh, involved with it. Um, that's all. Thanks for your attention.